What I want you guys to know who it is, it's your boy John Mike back again with Throwback Thursdays and today we're talking about one of my favorite keyboards of all time, MIDI keyboards of all time, and that is the Key Studio 25 by M Audio. This thing is dope. I'm telling you, so much nostalgia uh, kind of pops up with this when it results to this because uh, in mo a lot of people don't know, I used to sell MIDI controllers. That was like a whole phase of my life where I would buy like controllers locally on Craigslist and sell them on eBay and then I would buy them on eBay and then I resell them on Craigslist and, and then, you know, all those different things like that. I did that for a whole like two years of my life. That's one of the reasons why I do so much with MIDI controllers now and I know so much about MIDI controllers because for a good two to three years of my life, I was engrossed in selling these. So I would buy them and it's a whole thing. I'll tell that story, that whole full story one of these old days. And if you wanna know more about it, ask me about it in the comments. I'll glad to be glad to kind of tell you more about that in my life. But today we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the Key Studio 25. Uh, this was a really dope uh, controller and I'm not sure why M Audio stopped making this because this was dope. It's a slim line MIDI controller. And you're gonna see once I get it out of the box, exactly how slim this thing is and how thin it is and why it was my all-time favorite MIDI controller. So I had several of these over the time when I was selling uh, and I kept, always kept one just for myself you know, and I would keep it for a while and I'd sell it. Then I always end up buying another one because it just fits so well in your bag uh, and just worked really good. So uh, let's get it out the box and let's talk about it a little bit more and dig more into this nostalgia. All right, we got it out the box. It doesn't really come with any software. I didn't talk about that in the previous section, but uh, it, you know, it didn't come with software back then. You just used it with whatever you got. Uh, MIDI can cable that comes with it and the controller itself. Now this is practically new uh, and it's always hard to find these things in new condition or like new condition. But as you can see, it is really, really, then look at this, look at the gap. This is what I wanna focus on, is this gap right here between the keys and the actual body of the unit. This is what made this special. It was the fact that it was just so slim and these keys were just so thin and it just felt so good to play on. Oh God, man, so much nostalgia. Oh, that is so satisfying. I mean, 25 keys, it's not, you're not gonna be playing a full Rhapsody on this thing, but this is the consummate kind of like portable MIDI controller and it's just beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is, if you can't tell, I really was in love with this. Now here's something really dope about this. Why I hate that Mim Audio stopped making these because check this out. You got a power adapter, you got a USB port, you got a MIDI out port on something this thin Come on, man. You got sustain pedal and you got an on off switch. Uh, it's just, this is crazy. This is crazy. The fact that they had this much control in something that would just easily just slide down in your bag. Oh, I love it, man. So let's talk a little bit about the control options on here. So of course you had the eight knobs uh, and all of that. You had one little fader. You had the buttons that went along with it advanced controls, little LCD, LED, little thing. It's really, really cool. You had an octave and transpose button that came here with that. Now, here's something that I didn't like about it, which I've never really liked these, and that is, you know, modulation buttons and pitch bend buttons. I didn't really care for those. Um, back then, I still don't care for them now because while it's a, it helps the controller create a really low profile, um, these don't really give you much. Like I love, mainly for modulation. You know what I'm saying? Like modulation, I like a wheel that I can control and I can see where it's at. You know what I mean? Cause sometimes I want half modulation. I don't want full modulation. I, you know, with vibrato and things like that when you're doing MIDI, sometimes you need like that little in between, not so much, but just a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh, you need that. Same thing with pitch bend. Sometimes you need that just kind of in between a slight bend up or a slight bend down when you're playing around with it. That's like important to kind of have. So having a button that just kind of just gives you from zero to 127, you know what I mean? Like just 
left to right. That aside, this was still a really, really good, um, really, really great keyboard. One of my favorites of all times. And then the keys, I talked about this a little bit once I just got it out of the box, but the keys just felt amazing to me. It, there's not much travel to them, and that was cool. You know, they're, they're, they weren't as dynamic, but it just, for synth stuff and being able to like, you know, really like use some use it for some aux stuff or things like that. This was really cool on the go. Worked great on an airplane. It's quiet. It wasn't a whole lot of loud clackiness. This is a really, really dope keyboard. So if you can find one of these, I would suggest going after them and going and grabbing them because it's a great little keyboard. Now, last little thing, let's get it plugged up. Let's uh, play around with it just for some nostalgia's sake and just see how it plays when you plug it up to, you know, something and get some sound on it. Yeah, man. So, so much nostalgia in this. I mean, it's amazing. It just feels. And the dynamics are really, really even too. That's the thing that I loved about this. It's not hard dynamics, hard velocity. So I can finesse it. I could play some piano stuff on this. I wouldn't feel like bad, like having to bang out a very simple, basic kind of like that piano track on this. This would be great and it would work good for that. So uh, again, like I said, you have all of these little things right there at your fingertips, big LCD that gives you all the information, volume control. So it's just a great little controller to kind of have in your arsenal and literally in your bag. So if you could find one of these, you know, I've paid about, Think about 40 bucks for it on eBay. That's typically the place where you can find these. Sometimes you'll find them on Craigslist or Facebook Market or different places like that, you know what I mean, at different basic prices. So, you know, if you can find one of these, this is a really good buy. It's definitely something that's gonna be sitting in my bag and I'm keeping this, I'm holding on to this one. I'm not planning on letting this one uh, go uh, at all. This one is gonna stay with me uh, because it's just nostalgia and it's just a really, really great keyboard. So if you can find one, again, I recommend it. So I hope this video helped you. Hope it gave you a little nostalgia on this particular keyboard and brought, took you back in time a little bit for Throwback Thursdays. I like to try to cover stuff that's no longer on the market that's, you know, years and years old that you can't get, but you still see them and you wonder if they're good. You know, and keyboards that I wish I would have covered years ago as well, things like this. So, uh, hope to have you know how we do on these videos. You gotta hit the like button, you gotta hit the share button, uh, turn on notifications, subscribe, do all those things that you do on the video, uh, and let me know what other keyboards you would like to see me cover here on Throwback Thursdays. Uh, and we'll try to get one in here and get it covered. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. I'm out. Holla at your boy.